I can't take down one little red tank. One little red tank. I can't even take him out. Man, this was taking way longer than I said. Oh! Take that, you red son of a bitch. Dude, that's my... What is up, you guys? It's me, Death Sector, here today with another GTA 5 Online video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about really what Rockstar sh can and should be doing to really just spice up online a little bit more than just... Now, yes, the constant updates are good, but there's going to be more ways that they can spice it up a little bit. Before we get started with today's video, I'd ask that you guys just go ahead and drop a like if you liked the video. And if you didn't, leave a dislike. It'll help me out. Let me know what you guys are into. But with all that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, as I've been playing GTA 5 online since it came, first came out back on the PS3, I've noticed that there's hardly any places you can really go into at all besides the strip club and gun stores and, you know, the convenience stores. But those really just aren't practical places to go when you want to do something fun. I mean, yeah, sure, the strip club's all of that and all, but it's really just boring doing the same thing over and over and over. One thing that could really spice up this game is the opening of bars. Like the comedy club that was found way back. And also the new recently added Tequila La Bar. Which wasn't really added but it was part of an adversary mode which opened up the interior. And that interior is just so nice. Now if you glitch into it, there is a glitch to get into it. If you guys want to see it, just let me know in the comments. I'll show a glitch on how to get in there. But if you go in there, there's actually NPCs that spawn in there. There's a stage and everything. And what can really spice up online is, you know, opening these places up and allowing us players to actually, you know, go inside of them. Maybe, you know, put some like a local little acoustic band in there or something or allow us to drink or do whatever. Now, you guys know that there is one bar in the game that's open and then there's the Yellow Jack Inn and Sandy Shores. But there's not much to do there except play darts and go in and listen to NPC conversations. But that's about it. Now, to me, that's pretty boring, but I feel like, you know, just opening up these little locations and putting, like, little bands in there, or even doing what GTA 4 did with the comedy club, and allow us to go in and listen to comedians, or maybe even let players do it, and earn a little RP, but that's just one suggestion to me on how they could really spice up the game a little bit, besides the constant updates, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys... Now, another thing I believe what they should do is actually about things that they've already added into the game, but after these updates seem to have just disappeared completely from the game. Now, as you guys know, is armored trucks, they're nowhere to be found anymore. Literally, I can never get one to spawn. And Trevor's planes, the ones that you were supposed to take down that came with the heist update, or I believe it was another update before that, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe it was the heist update, but... They're gone. I mean, they they have taken those out and I believe replaced them with free mode events. But actually, I believe they were taken out during ill-gotten gains was when Trevor's airplanes were gone for some mysterious reason. If you guys know why they were, let me know. But they're gone. They're not in the game anymore. And that was something I really looked forward to is what everybody really looked forward to was who's going to get the plane? Who's going to get the drug smuggling boat? But they're no longer in the game, as you guys have kind of noticed and to me that's real bummer that that was pretty cool you know living the criminal lifestyle taking down planes and robbing armored trucks to me that was just fun and that kind of made the game better in certain ways you know that really competitive edge now i'm not saying free mode events aren't competitive they are but think about it the good ones hardly ever come on like hunt the beast it i mean i hardly ever see it. all it is is just these challenges that take up our time that only pl Bleh. Sorry, that only pay a measly probably 10 grand for you winning and for multiple attempts and most of the time dealing with people killing you to get that top score. Now, to me, that's not very fun. I love Criminal Damage and Hunt the Beast, but those are about the only two I really like out of all the free mode events. And I believe that, you know, this, that update really had the potential to really be something. And it was fun, don't get me wrong, but I feel like what it brung didn't really fill in what they took out now that's just me but let's go ahead and move. now as you guys know 
the cops in this game are retardedly overpowered and have actually, if you have not noticed, they've gotten more powerful with each update that comes out. They get a little bit more powerful. And thus, it kind of makes the game laggy. Like, have you noticed, like, when somebody's got five stars, the whole game just lags out? Yeah, but that's why. It's because there's so much AI there, and they're all counter-reacting. That's why the game is lagging out. Now, that may not be all the factors. It may have to do with, yes, your internet or Rockstar servers, but I believe them co the cops need to be toned down. As it's just no longer fun to really have the cops on you. It's no longer fun. It used to be you could just mow them all down. I mean, you still can, but it's a lot harder. And I believe actually getting killed by them costs more than dying from another player. That's my theory, because as I noticed, when I die from cops, I lose off. I usually seem to have less money. As you guys see, I only have a means of 13k, but that's just for me doing dumb spending decisions, like the dump truck, which I love. <laughs> Back on track. But yes, the cops and the military, they're just ridiculously overpowered. After the high stub day, I think it's nearly impossible to get a jet out of Fort Zancudo the first time without dying it literally to me it's impossible i used to be able to do it first try like that i could get out and have a jet but now it's impossible just because of how accurate and it's basically once you get locked on to if they miss they're going to shoot you with the the little cannon thing when they don't even seem to be nearby so i believe that the ai needs to be toned down to human levels not superhuman because that's what i noticed they are now it's basically superhuman it takes a whole clip just to take down one measly little cop a SWAT team I've noticed it, it could take sometimes two clips to take them out depending on the connection to the server and everything but to me that's just me maybe it's just my timing I don't know but that's just my method on how they could really do it is t now another really good method they could do to really kind of but this isn't really about making it run better or quick but this is just you know maybe balancing it out kind of thing they could do is and I believe that would be just, you know, removing all this military-grade weaponry they have or putting, you know, limits on when you can get it. I've seen level ones with homing, with basically military-grade hardware. They have access to all the good stuff. I've seen level ones with bulletproof helmets and everything, and they, they do eventually have the health of a rank 80 with that stuff on. Now, I'm not saying that, yes oh, boo-hoo, it should all go away, but I believe that that bulletproof helmet needs to have a lock on it. I'm not saying take it out completely, because, you know, it is useful. I'll give it that. It can protect you from a one-shot shotgun kill, even though an assault shotgun will wipe you out pretty much easily. I've done it before, but I believe that it needs to be have a lock on it. No rank one, I'm sorry, but no rank one should have access to that. I'm sorry. Yes, it kind of makes the game more fair for them, but... What does it do for us that have been playing this forever when why should these people rank up when they get all the really good stuff at rank one? All they gotta do do one heist, you can buy the homing missile and the proximity mines, which are basically sticky bombs, just motion activated, which I don't think is fair. But yes, I believe don't remove this stuff, but put a lock on it. Now the armored Karuma is useful, yes. But I don't think all this armored, military-grade stuff should be going into a game that's not really, you know, towards military stuff. I mean, really, when's the last time you saw military-grade weaponry in a GTA since San Andreas? Now, San Andreas didn't really have that much military-grade weaponry. Now, the tank and stuff is good, yes. I love the tank. I love my Savage and my Hydra, but I really don't like the fact that with every update, more military type grade weaponry gets into the game. And really, there's no real way yet to counter RPGs or homing missiles. There's no real way to counter that stuff yet. And to be honest, there's no real way to counter jets either. At least the Hydra, I've noticed. The Hydra is easier to evade the homing missile, so yes, it is harder to shoot them down. But if you're going to put that in the game, I think we should have sufficient ways of countering all this stuff. Like RPGs. There's no way to counter them at all in the game there's not ways to counter stickies grenades or anything and i believe what they should do is take a battlefield approach to it in battlefield if you get hit with rpgs yes it's a one-shot kill but if it hits the floor it only takes away nearly all your health it doesn't kill you instantly but it takes away the majority good half of your health and i believe that's good and that should also be done with grenades if you can get just any bit far away from them it all it won't kill you instantly but that's just my take on it. I believe that's what they should do is 
kind of balancing it all out. Because I've noticed just the explosive spam in this game is getting out of control. And it's mostly due to rank 1s having all this good grade hardware that you can get with no level lock. I mean, that's one way they could balance out the game a little bit is, you know, just giving us appropriate ways to counter explosives and jets. Don't remove the stuff completely because I'll admit I, I do take pride in having that stuff. I have an armor crew, I have bulletproof helmets. It's just because, you know, playing the game now, you got to have it. I'm sorry, but you people that don't have it, you guys will have to eventually buy one as every game has at least three to five users. And it's slowly growing, I've noticed. Sometimes it'll go from five to ten to nearly a whole lobby just being bulletproof. And, you know, it's it's getting out of control a little bit, and I believe it does need some rebalancing. And also the bulletproof helmet does need to be looked into, as I noticed that on some players, it's it does not work. You know, I paid 20 grand for it, and I've noticed that sometimes it doesn't protect the like shit. Well, yeah, the person I'm versing, it protects them from nearly everything I throw at them. Except for RPGs and stuff. But it does help them from heavy snipers, but I noticed mine. Sometimes it's iffy whether it wants to work, so I believe that should be looked into as well. But you guys may not have that problem. So I guess that's why it's not really looked into, but I believe that is something they should look into as 20k. I mean, sure, it's chump change, but that's something they need to go on. Now enough rambling about this top. Now for our next good method, and this is probably, yes, this is going to be the last one, of course. But the next thing they could do is, you know, start start really working on your online infrastructure. I mean, as of right now, when I try to play this game, it's very unstable. Now I notice this is different on some servers, but I've noticed largely it's very unstable most of the time. I get multiple disconnections, and I've even doing what Rockstar recommends you to do and using an Ethernet cable. Now, I do believe that GT Online uses a type of peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking system to where the host, where the host is, you know, the, you're connected to the host is internet. And if the host's internet is bad, you're just going to have a very bad time. As that means it's just going to lag out a lot. But I believe that that is what they use. I could be wrong as I don't know the source migrations when somebody leaves, but... I do believe that's what they use, but really, Rockstar, if you guys would just improve your online stability, as I've noticed, you know, that's what mainly what people complain about is, you know, your online stability is kind of shit, and that's not just coming from me, that's coming from a lot of people. Your online infrastructure is kind of shit, and this may have something to do with PlayStation and Xbox and Steam as well, or whoever you use, yeah, true, that could have some kind of technique on that too, but... Come on, Rockstar. You guys have made over $2 billion from this game. There is no excuse that a AAA title that has come out three different times, last gen, next gen, and PC, should still be having these massive connection issues. Now, I understand this game world is massive. It's a huge game, so I understand why we would be having these issues. I understand that you can't all fix them, but come on, Rockstar. You guys have had three different tries to fix this, and I believe that even cheating is now making its way to the xbox one ps4 and it's even on the pc too more on the pc than next gen but i've seen next gen do it too with modded accounts and everything but well, actually you guys what i believe you guys could do is play the game if you guys would actually play the game you guys would be able to fix some of the stuff that people complain about like multiple glitches is what people tell you but if you guys would play the game and experience it for yourself the overpowered cops the modded accounts, the kind of, what would you say, broken gunplay is what I've heard some people call it. When somebody spams their RPGs and stuff, that can piss a lot of people off and really make them not play the game. Now, I understand you, you Rockstar, you guys do good. Now, I know you've been listening to the community, but really what you need to do is play the game. Play your own game, Rockstar. And you guys would maybe be able to reconnect with the community on some type of level sure shark cards aren't going to go away no matter what you say they're not going to go away they're not it's just a fact of life about this game they're not going to go away and they're more than likely going to be in gta 6 as well now with red dead because we all know that's probably going to be the next game i really hope this stuff does not carry over and i hope online problems don't carry over i wish the best at rockstar but rockstar if you guys would play your game i believe the community as a whole would benefit now, I remember on the PS3, they would actually send people in looking for cheaters and stuff, and 
they kind of worked for a little bit. They would catch glitchers and stuff and all that. But also, you guys need to play the game. You guys are the developers, I know. You shouldn't have to play your game. You should rely on the community, but sometimes the community does not report stuff. Sometimes we just blatantly ignore what's going on, and we just carry on with our merry lives. If you guys really want to fix the game, play it, and understand where we're all coming from. Now, sure, some people have no problems with this game. I have very little. I have minor complaints about it, but that's just some my opinion. My opinion is completely different from someone else's, and it's completely different, probably completely different from Rockstar as well. But the community as a whole would benefit rocks would benefit from you, Rockstar, playing the game and knowing what's wrong with it, and you guys experiencing it for yourselves and patching it up. Now, to me, that's just that, those are my methods on how they could really make the game better as a whole and bring back people. Now, understand this game doesn't really need to bring back people. It has eight million players a day, I believe, and that's a shit ton. But those are my methods, Rockstar. Bring out, bring up bars, rebalance the game, make missions pay more. No, I guess missions don't pay shit no more. They really don't. So that's not really a way. And, you know, just improve your online for infrastructure. That's just my ways of how they can improve the game. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, dislike it. Subscribe. If you want another video like this or you want the glitch on how to get into Key La La Bar, let me know in the comments and I will do a video on how to get in there. Thank you guys for viewing.